If you ask me, when it comes to suspense and intrigue, nothing beats a good murder trial. I'm Reba McIntyre, and today's daytime to remember caused quite a stir when it first aired back in 1979 on One Life to Live. When Karen Woolock took the stand in the Mark O'Dane murder trial, she swore to tell the truth, the whole truth. But Karen prayed that the whole truth about herself would never come out, because if it did, her husband Larry, the people of Landview, and the whole wide world would learn that this housewife was a common hooker. Remember how you just couldn't wait to see what she'd say? Well, yesterday, in the first part of this classic episode, District Attorney Herb Callison savagely cross-examined Karen, who appeared to be on the verge of cracking. I remember when this first aired, I was touring the country in a van and trailer that was breaking down a lot. Luckily for me, it broke down on the day Karen took the stand. So while we were waiting for the van to get fixed, I cozied up to a TV set and watched soap history in the making. Now, Mrs. Wolak, after Katrina Carr's phone call to you that night, from which you concluded that she knew who had killed Mark O'Dane, yes. you said that she turned up missing. Yes. You tried every way you knew how to locate her, but you were unsuccessful. Yes, that's right. Would you tell the court it just what means you used in trying to locate Katrina? I called um, several people. I went to various places. What sort of places? First, I went to her ho hotel where she was living, and I found out that she'd moved. And where else did you look? Um, various bars where she had hung out. I see. Now... You testified earlier that you and this person, this prostitute, were only casually acquainted. Um, and yet you're telling us now that you knew her various hangouts. Objection, Your Honor. Counsel's implications are clearly out of order here. Objection sustained. The jury will ignore Mr. Callison's last remarks. Mrs. Wolek. After you received that phone call from Katrina Carr, did you tell anybody about it? Yes, I told Talbot Huddleston. Isn't it true that you and your husband are good friends of the defendant, Victoria Lord Riley? Yes, that's true. Now, when the defendant was indicted, didn't you feel it incumbent upon yourself to tell your husband about that phone call? Yes. Then... Why didn't you? I, I don't know. I, I guess I thought that... You he, thought you thought he might wonder how you happened to be acquainted with a prostitute. Yes, I, I guess so. All right, but there were other people you could have told, weren't there? Or did you refrain from telling them for the same reason? Yes, I, I guess I did. Well, then that brings us to the question of why you were willing to tell Talbot Huddleston, doesn't it? Why did you turn to Talbot Huddleston? I told Mr. Huddleston because I uh, couldn't find Katrina, and I was very frustrated that I couldn't find her. I knew she had some information, and, and I didn't have any financial means, and I, I knew that, that he could hire a private investigator, so I worked for him, and I, and I went to him, and I told him the story. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. Um, what, what just, just what is it that you did for the Huddleston firm, Mrs. Wall? I modeled dresses. And how long did you model dresses for the Huddleston firm? <laughs> I don't remember. Mm -hmm. It was several months. Yeah. Then perhaps you could explain to this court why no one at the Huddleston firm remembers your ever having worked for them. Why no one there has ever heard of you. And while you're at it, Mrs. Wolek, perhaps you will also explain why since the time you came to Landview up until now, there is absolutely no record in the Huddleston Company files of your ever having been employed by them. The court is waiting for your explanation. It's true. It's true. 
I never worked for the Huddleston Company. In other words, you lied to this court. And I submit that if you could lie about one thing, you'd be lying about everything else. In fact, your testimony could be one long tissue uh, of lies. No, it's not true. It's not true. Katrina came to me. She told me she knew who killed Margaret. She told me it was Calvin Huddleston. Vicki Riley didn't kill Margaret. She couldn't kill anybody. Please, you've got to believe me. other was Calvin Calvin Huddleston. Order. Order in this court. Your Honor, Mr. Callison has thoroughly succeeded in in placing the witness, putting her through a great emotional strain. On the contrary, the witness, with some assistance, has put herself in this position. Had she been a truthful witness, this might never have happened. Gentlemen, I have warned both of you repeatedly about this kind of behavior. I am declaring this court in recess for one hour. I would like to see both of you in my chambers. All rise. Darling, why did you do it? You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. Once, our six-year-old grandson walked in on us. He's had all the slurping woke him up. Frosted Flakes had the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! I do real like nobody else. Both. Mrs. Wolek, I know this has been an arduous experience for you, but I'm afraid there has been no real clarification on the three major questions in which I've been questioning you, namely, why Katrina Carr called you on December 15th that night? Why you later called Talbot Huddleston regarding Katrina as opposed to someone with whom you were more closely acquainted? And finally, but most importantly, your relationship with the deceased Mark O'Dane after he arrived in Landview. Your Honor, it seems to me that Learned Counsel has covered all three of these areas more than adequately, and it certainly is not going to profit anybody in the courtroom for him to go over. Your Honor... I believe this witness's testimony simply cannot be left dangling. She has seriously impugned the reputation of a respected member of this community. The court is in agreement, Mr. Galveston. You may continue your cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Now then, Mrs. Wallach, I would like to begin by disposing of the Huddleston matter once and for all. Now, just prior to the recess, you stated that Talbot Huddleston killed Mark O'Day. Now, I think I can safely assume that you don't have any incontrovertible evidence for, with which to support that charge, or surely you would have presented it to us. Yes? Only Katrina Carr could prove that. But unfortunately, Katrina Carr is lying comatose in Landview Hospital and is therefore unable to do that. Am I right? Yes, you are right. Well then, perhaps you could tell us why you think Talbot Huddleston killed Mark O'Dang. I don't know what reason he may have had. Oh. Well, was he acquainted with Marco? Yes. How do you know that? I saw him several time that, times at Marco's health club. I see. You were in the habit of going to the health club, were you? No, I was not in the habit of going to the health club. I happened to see him there. Well, were you a member of the health club? No! Well, that's a rather emphatic no. If you weren't a member, why did you go there? Now, uh, Mrs. Wolak. You did state earlier that you and Marco Dane were not on close terms, did you not? Yes. Mm hmm. Then what earthly reason would you have for going to his health club? He he called me. I went. I uh, I went there a couple of times. He called you about what? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't remember. Oh well, surely you must remember something. I mean, I I, I a man like that. This is a man who was an important part of your past, a man who followed you all the way to land, you know. I would think that if he asked you to come and see you about something, something in his office, you wouldn't easily forget what that something was. Marco had a sadistic streak. He, uh, enjoyed reminding me about the past. Reminding you? How? He would, um... He said he was never going to let me...